Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the launch of our annual Vector Awareness Campaign under the theme, Educate, Empower, Eradicate, Vector Awareness Matters. Today is not just about kicking off a campaign, it's about rallying together as a community to tackle a tiny yet mighty foe, Vectors. Today marks the beginning of an adventure, a journey fueled by knowledge, empowerment, and community spirit. With the unwavering, unwavering support of the Ministry of Education, our dedicated community groups in Ancillary District, and our generous sponsors, we're gearing up for an unforgettable campaign. Throughout this campaign, we're not just spreading awareness, we're turning learning about vectors into an adventure worth remembering. From fun workshops to interactive inter educational materials and engaging community activities, we're here to educate, empower, and ultimately eradicate those pesky vectors from our communities. So buckle up and get ready for an exciting journey ahead. Together, we're on a mission to educate and make sure everyone knows how to keep those bugs at bay and protect themselves and their loved ones. The aim is to empower individuals with the tools to protect themselves and by the end, er eradicate those pres the presence of the vectors. It is a big goal, but with your enthusiasm and support, we know that we can achieve it. Thank you all for being here today, and let's kick off our Eradicate, Empower, Educate, sorry, Educate, Empower, Eradicate Vector Awareness Matters campaign with a bang. Here's to a successful campaign ahead. Let's make it happen. This morning, it is uh, a great privilege to address you. Uh, to address you on a matter that is uh, extremely dear to my heart uh, and I believe uh, very important uh, to all of us in St. Lucia. As we've heard the theme already, educate, uh, empower, eradicate uh, vector awareness matters. We want to highlight uh, the importance of uh, vectors among us and uh, most importantly their impacts. In the Americas, as of 30th April 2024, there have been 7.6 million cases of dengue fever recorded. Out of that 7.4 million cases, 16,000 of them have been significant severe cases uh, whilst uh, there have been approximately 3,000 deaths. So yes, mosquito kills. Interestingly in the Americas uh, is the fact that uh, last year 2023 there was only 3.4 million cases of dengue fever recorded. However, for the first five months uh, of this year they have almost doubled that number. It tells us that whereas uh, in the past five years uh, we've seen uh, incremental increase in uh, uh, dengue fever cases worldwide, uh, it is greater uh, within the Americas. The increase is exponential and I want to tell you that St. Lucia finds itself uh, among the region of the Americas. For 2023, St. Lucia recorded 60 confirmed cases of dengue fever. And we also had 8 confirmed cases of leptospirosis. This is indeed phenomenal. 
because whereas uh, both uh, dengue fever and leptospirosis are endemic to St. Lucia, what we have seen is uh, there's a gradual increase throughout the years. And this year we keep our fingers crossed because we know the issues we had earlier in the year with intermittent water supplies. We know the issues that we have uh, in terms of uh, heavy amounts of rain uh, and uh, the impact of climate change. Uh, all of these uh, significantly impact uh, uh, the population of both uh, uh, mosquitoes as well as uh, rodents. We also confronted uh, with uh, a growing situation on the island at this time uh, where we are seeing uh, a resurgence of bed bugs. And so we need to be on our guards. And as I say, we need to be on our guards. Uh, only recently, insecticide resistant testing for mosquitoes was conducted. And the community of ancillary was one chosen community. And the results are not good at all. For common household insecticide that we use, the common ones that we spray for mosquitoes and flies, you know what? There is uh, approximately 70% uh, resistance uh, to this insecticide. In other words, uh, what this tells us is that uh, out of every 10 mosquitoes that you spray, the kill rate is only 3. And 7 uh, survive. Uh, this is attributed uh, to the fact that uh, there have been an overuse uh, of insecticide and now uh, uh, mosquitoes uh, have developed resistance uh, to this insecticide and their active ingredients, uh, primarily the permethrin, uh, and uh, it's not resulting in the impact uh, that you would like. Therefore, in order to address and to arrest uh, the problems of, of mosquitoes and rodents, uh, we need uh, to implement uh, a, a measure that is uh, holistic. A measure uh, that uh, indeed we all must play a part of. Uh, and the measure that uh, I'm speaking about uh, is really an integrated uh, vector management uh, system. What is a vector management system? It's really a, a system or a program uh, that uh, uh, combines several strategies uh, that are implemented. Uh, they have been proven, they have been tried, they have been tested, uh, and they have been proven to be successful. And there is no need uh, for us to depart uh, from uh, the system. It's tried and tested. And so, as I bring to us uh, the, the whole thought of uh, an integrated uh, vector management system, uh, we, we're thinking one of uh, environmental modification. What is it that we can do in the environment, uh, around our homes, uh, and in our communities uh, to prevent uh, mosquitoes and rodents from breeding? There are modifications that can be done, such as uh, Removing stagnated water. Uh, do regular collection of garbage off your prem premises. Uh, and do not throw food uh, and uh, bits of food everywhere outside in the drains uh, that a carriage is rodent. Uh, we must look at uh, a sustainable environmental management system uh, whereby we change the landscape uh, and we deny these vectors uh, harborage uh, in and around our homes. Uh, there is also need uh, uh, for us to indeed uh, engage uh, in education. We at the Ministry of Health uh, for years uh, have worked with our schools and we would continue to work with our schools uh, because we believe uh, that educating the young minds uh, would result in the, in the change process that we are looking for. And so we, we encourage our teachers uh, uh, to make uh, a vector control uh, a subject on your curriculum. To teach them on the habits of vectors uh, and, uh, and how they can be controlled. Uh, 
in and around the homes. And so we're going to continue the education program. We also continue our education program at the household levels. That is one of the fundamental activities of our vector control officers. When they go to the homes, they educate householders on how to manage, indeed, potential breeding sites, such as covering germs, replacing water from the flower vase, and putting it soil, and doing things around the house that would prevent mosquitoes and rodents uh, from breeding. So education uh, must uh, continue. And then we have to, to look at the whole question of uh, legislation and enforcement. I must say that uh, our legislative arrangement in St. Lucia this time is a little weak. It doesn't lack, uh, it does lack uh, the teeth uh, that really needs. We know the backlog of cases in our court systems, uh, and as a result, uh, it's extremely difficult uh, to take le legal action. Therefore, it has been recommended that we look at uh, amending our legislation uh, to allow for a ticketing system to take place uh, that a violator can be ticketed and fined on the spot uh, for breeding mosquitoes and rodents. And so we need to look at the whole question of policy and legislation, solid waste management, and we need to look at the whole issue of building codes and sanitary measures within our homes. Then we need to look at working with partners. Working with partners, and today I'm so glad to see the turnout from the Ministry of Education. Working with partners like education, health, uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, corporate St. Lucia, community groups, uh, these are all important partners uh, that we must collaborate with uh, and work together indeed to reduce uh, mosquito population and the threat uh, of mosquito borne diseases. And as I mentioned, uh, uh, community partnership. Uh, this needs to be highlighted. In several communities, we have mothers and fathers groups. We have churches. We have sporting groups and non-governmental organizations. All these groups must come together with one aim, one goal, in terms of working together to reduce mosquitoes and rodents. The thing is, many times uh, we get to complain, I keep my yard clean. Around my house, uh, my water containers are covered, yet uh, um, there's an infestation of mosquitoes. I see rats coming in my garage. Where is it coming from? It truly takes a community effort. Because if uh, you alone are going to keep your premises clean and your neighbors 10 houses away, the premise is unkept, uh, they can very well be breeding uh, mosquitoes uh, that travels from their house to yours. Uh, the flight range of a mosquito is approximately one mile. And so community uh, to, togetherness and working together is, with community is very important. And as part of the integrated management, vector management program, then comes in chemical treatment. Many times we want to rely on chemical treatment. We want to see fogging. We want uh, to see inspectors uh, putting things in our drums. Uh, but it has been proven uh, that chemicals alone uh, are ineffective. It is definitely a part of the integrated approach uh, that must be taken. And so we are going to continue with our fogging activities. Uh, we are going to continue with our lavasiding activities. Uh, but uh, we need all hands on board. Uh, we need uh, uh, that togetherness uh, in order for the program to be successful. And so in conclusion, uh, I want to indeed uh, encourage all of us uh, uh, that we embrace uh, wholeheartedly uh, the theme of uh, this launch, which is educate empower, eradicate. Vector awareness matters. 
I thank you. A warm welcome to the launch of the Vector Awareness Week here in beautiful St. Lucia. It is a privilege to stand before you today as we come together to address a critical issue that affects the health and well-being of our country. And of course, when we speak of health, we sometimes focus on the person, the being, the individual. And we may fail to recognize that a healthy individual in terms of the physique is not truly healthy if that person is residing within an unhealthy environment. So the focus of our campaign and all the objectives outlined today is to examine health and wellness in a holistic manner and to project this onto the population that it is not just about keeping myself clean, visiting the doctor, drinking plenty of water, eating and exercising rightfully, but ensuring that my environment is clean and free of vectors that can cause life-threatening diseases. Vectors such as mosquitoes, bedbugs, and rodents are more than just nuisances. They are carriers of diseases that pose serious threat to public health. Diseases such as dengue fever, Zika, chikungunya, and leptospirosis have left significant impacts on our lives, our economies, our communities, and our environment. The need for heightened awareness and concerted action has never been more urgent. Vectors Awareness Week is not just a campaign. It is a call to action. It is a reminder of our collective responsibility to protect ourselves, our families, and our communities from vector-borne diseases. This campaign, we will focus on educating and empowering every individual with the knowledge and tools to combat these threats effectively. Throughout this campaign, we have planned a series of activities including environment educational sessions, working with school, householders, corporate St. Lucia, and the community to roll out vector control prevention activities. These initiatives aim to raise awareness about the importance of preventing vector breeding sites, promoting the use of protective measures, and encouraging early detection and treatment of vector-borne diseases. We are fortunate to have the support and collaboration of various stakeholders, including government agencies, the business sector, healthcare providers, community organizations, and our dedicated citizens. Your participation and commitment are crucial in making this campaign a success. I would like to extend my heartless thanks, heartful, heartfelt thanks, sorry, to all our partners and volunteers who have worked tirelessly to make Vector Awareness Week possible. Your dedication and efforts are truly commendable. As we embark on this important journey, let us remember that the fight against vector-borne diseases requires continuous effort and vigilance. By working together, we can create a healthier and safer St. Lucia for all. Thank you for being here today, and let us make Vector Awareness Week 2024 a resounding success. Together, we can make a difference. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, children, one and all, I stand before you to emphasize the critical aspect of public health that impacts all of us, and it is the need for effective vector control through community collaboration. All the speakers before me have explained to you why it is important to control vectors. The speakers have told you about rats and mosquitoes and so many others and they have also explained to you the dangers with diseases like malaria dengue fever zika chikungunya and so many more throughout the years st lucia has experienced several outbreaks and sometimes diseases re-emerge situations like malaria the West Nile virus, 
these are present in our region and we must be very careful that we do not ignore the vectors that cause these diseases to emerge and re-emerge. I encourage the people of Ancillary and indeed all of St. Lucia to take the necessary action and to participate with every other community member, with neighbors, to ensure that we control the vectors, to ensure that we clean around our homes, and to ensure that we come together with community to, en to cause our communities to be cleaner. The first thing we must understand it is that community collaboration is very critical because it enables us to detect increases in mosquito populations on usual mosquito behavior and to respond to mosquito-borne threats very early. Secondly, it's important to involve the community because it causes all of us to take proactive measures to re reduce the breeding grounds of mosquitoes. Simple activities like water in flower pots, in our gutters, discarded tires, all of those things can cause serious problems and we can come together as a community to deal with it. Education is very important. It's very important and effective in mosquito control efforts. And it's important for us to continue with community workshops, educational campaigns, outreach programs to ensure that everyone in our community is well equipped. Educated communities are more likely to adopt personal proactive measures such as using mosquito nets, wearing repellents, and seeking timely medical care. It is important to implement mosquito control measures because when communities are actively involved, vector control programs increase the, not only the awareness, as I said before, but it helps when the professionals come around and all of the, distribu the distribution efforts, they are, more, they are more likely to be adopted by the community. I say to you, it's important to build resilience within our communities, in all of our communities. You see what is happening in our city. You see the increases all over St. Lucia in the numbers of, of whether it be mice or rats, the increases in mosquitoes and so on, cockroaches and a number of others, we need to come together to ensure that the populations are reduced. I want to say to you that community collaboration, like collaborating with the Ministry of Education, collaborating with the Ministry of Infrastructure, collaborating with contractors and all community players, these are very important because if everyone is aware and everyone is educated, then our whole community is secured. Jodi a nous avons commencé sa nous avons créé éducation en anglais, nous avons dit Vector Awareness Campaign. Ça veut dire tous les années, ministre là, qu'a gardé au lieu de cette liste, avec faire mon connaître plus en les qui côté what qu'a fait plus population, qui côté what qu'a multiplié, qui côté migré qu'a multiplié, avec staff ministère qui a allé tout partout pour éduquer mon. Parce que si nous pas changer ces bagages là, si nous pas détruit what avec my gwen, avec l'autre vermin, nous ca une joine malade, plus malade en commune nous, avec ça ca mettait plus trois cassement tout partout au lieu en pays cette ici. Comme ça ça nous ca fait jodi à c'est un commencement à ce programme là. Nous ca aller tout partout au lieu en cette ici avec ma ca encourager toute commune, toute community groups, l'église, toute commune pour faire ça, yo, ça fait yo même pour détruire côté wat avec my gwen avec wa vet avec différents vermin ka wété à présent nous qu'attend nous ni en chai pli bagay compinez et nous ka encourager moun pour nettoyer li won kayou nettoyer commune nan pour nous ni moins en ces bagay ça là en ces communauté ya i wish to thank all those who came together to put this program this launching event together and I know that there will be many more activities throughout the week. I wish to thank um, all those in the community. And in a very special way, once again, 
Let us give a round of applause to the children, the teachers, and the schools. Let's give them a round of applause again. They have come here to join us. Thanks to the staff, headed by Dr. Ragunanan, who looks younger and younger every time. I told him this morning, this, the t-shirt the and his pants make him look very young. He said there are other things that are making him feel young, because he's just about to begin life. So once again, I wish to thank everyone and say to you, have a wonderful day. And children, do have a wonderful holiday. As you go home, continue to clean the drains and to educate your parents also. So thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Merci Ashai. Beware. Look out for